these kinds of things can happen to anybody. And I, I was thinking it's a bad choice that teachers make, but you have a completely different slant on that. It's, uh, well, maybe you could talk about that. Sure. I, I think that the first thing to remember is, is, is really something very basic, and that is that misconduct is not an event, mm -hmm. but rather it's a process. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is to really examine the process. If we only examine the event, then it only becomes punitive and not preventative. Mm -hmm. And so that's where um, I, I like to kind of, you know, kind of put it into two boxes, if you will. Um, there is there is this notion of, of conduct and laws, and that is kind of this red box. But but most teachers are not in that box, and nor do they cross that line. Mm -hmm. But right to the left of that is this gray box, if you will, filled with the myriad complexities that teachers face. Mm -hmm. And within that, that is the process. So there are all kinds of things that, that might lead a really effective teacher to be right on the edge between the gray and the red, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, and let me give you an example. Sure, please. Um, I, I did a research project several years back where I did a series of interviews with a person that spent five years in prison for an inappropriate relationship with a, uh, with a student. And, mm -hmm. and in that, in the series of interviews, I, I, it was fascinating to hear about the process because he entered the profession as a very caring person and that certainly wasn't his goal mm -hmm. um, to, to find himself in a relationship, but it was a student that came to him and said, you're my, my favorite teacher, you're the only one I can talk to, I need to tell you about a situation that's happening in, in my life. Mm -hmm. And of course, being the caring, compassionate person that he is, like most teachers are, mm -hmm. then of course he said, yes, absolutely. Well, that turned into one lunch hour, which turned into another lunch hour, which turned into before school and after school, and not being trained in that expansive role beyond being a teacher, not being trained as a, as a counselor or, or understanding the dynamics that, that are at play here, um, he made some critical mistakes. And one of them was being transparent about his own life and, and things that he has gone through. And that changed the relationship. So it became, uh, instead of a teacher-student dyad, it changed that dyad completely. It changed right. into a, a different uh, kind of, yeah, uh, more exactly. of a like peers, Sure, yeah. and, and it never was about sex at all. No. That's interesting. And in fact, as a 51-year-old teacher and a 14-year-old student, it, that was not even the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, and when we, look at, when we look at misconduct as a process, what it does is it gives us the chance to look in all of the areas and the vulnerabilities and the risks that teachers face every day mm. in their life because they care. And, and my, my thought is that the most caring, compassionate teachers are the ones that are most at risk. Most vulnerable. Yeah, they are.